So let's practice. I always ate. Eat will eat breakfast. He sits, sat, will sit beside me every day in class. Tingnan ninyo kung ano yung mga time markers na pwede ninyong makita. Kung kailangan ninyo ng extra time, pwede ninyong i-pause itong video na ito. So may sagot na ba kayo? Ang tamang mga sagot ay, I always eat breakfast. Bakit? Dahil may adverb of frequency na always. At yung time marker na ito ay sa present tense. Yan. Bakit hindi eats? Dahil ang subject natin ay I. At ang I ay always plural. So, I always eat breakfast. Next, he sits beside me every day in class. Bakit na naman present tense? Dahil may nakita na naman tayong adverb of frequency. Very good. So, next. Tomorrow, the choir sings a song will sing at the concert. Next, tomorrow the choir sings song will sing at the concert. She studies, studied, will study her lessons tonight. May ma ano nga ba ang tamang tense ng ating verb? Meron ba tayo na ikita mga time markers? Ang tamang sagot ay, Tomorrow the choir will sing at the concert. Bakit? Dahil may nakita tayong time, time marker na tomorrow. Kaya ang ibig sabihin nito, hindi pa ito nangyayari. Kaya, will sing. Next. She will study her lessons tonight. Bakit na naman future tense? Dahil meron na naman tayong naitang time marker, which is yung tonight. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa ito nangyayari. Mamayang gabi pa lang. Next, many families take, took, will take time to have a glimpse of the eclipse yesterday. I go, went, will go to the gym last week. Again, kung kailangan nyo ng extra time, i-post nyo lang ang video na ito. So, ang tamang sagot ay, many families took time to have a glimpse of the eclipse yesterday. Bakit past tense? Dahil sa salitang yesterday, ang took ay past tense ng salitang take. Next is, I went to the gym last week. Again, past tense na naman siya dahil sa salitang last week. Ibig sabihin, nangyari na. Tapos na. Next is yung past perfect tense. Dito, may dalawang action na natapos na o tapos na. Pero yung ating past perfect tense is yung naunang action kaysa doon sa isa. Ang mga palatandaan natin dito is yung when, before, at after. Ito yung tinatawag natin na had form. Ito yung may had at yung past participle ng ating verb. Yan. For example, he had arrived before we got there. May dalawa tayong action. Arrive at got. Pareha silang nasa past tense dahil parehas na silang tapos. Pero ang question is, ano nga ba yung action na naunang natapos? Ito yung had arrived. Dumating siya bago pa kami dumating doon. Okay? So, yung past perfect tense natin emphasizes on ano yung naunang natapos. Another example, after the guest had gone, I went to bed. Again, Meron na naman tayong dalawang verb, yung gone at went. Pero ang tanong ulit, ano yung unang natapos o nagawa? Ito yung umalis yung ating mga guests bago siya pumunta ng bed. Gets ba? So, let's practice. We waited, had waited at the mall for half an hour when my friend came, had came into view. Alin dito yung nasa past tense at alin dito yung nasa past perfect tense? Ulitin natin, ang past perfect tense is yung naunang action na natapos. So, ang tamang sagot ay, we had waited at the mall for an hour 
when my friend came into view. Me, this means that the waiting part took place before the arrival of the friend. Okay ba? Next, Marpin had work, work as a secretary before he became, had become the company president. Again, ano ba yung unang natapos? Answer is, naging secretary muna siya. Had work before he came the company president. Okay? So next is yung present perfect tense. Ito yung condition na nasimulan na at hanggang ngayon ay nagpapatuloy pa rin. Ang mga palatandaan natin dito ay since. At ang verb form natin ay has o have plus yung past participle. Depende kung singular o plural yung ating subject. Again, ito yung mga action na nagsimula na at hanggang ngayon ay nagpapatuloy pa rin. For example, I have lived in this apartment since I graduated from college. Ayan, may palatandaan tayo, time marker na since. Ang sinasabi dito is, nakatira na ako dito noon pa. Simula nung nag-graduate ako ng kolehiyo At hanggang ngayon, totoo ito, dito pa rin ako nakatira. So let's practice. The director has been, have been, was in the meeting since this morning. May mga time markers ba tayo na ikita? Ang tamang sagot ay, has been in the meeting since this morning. Ibig sabihin kaninang umaga, hanggang ngayon nasa meeting pa rin siya. Bakit hindi have been? Dahil ang ating subject ay director at ito ay singular. Very good. Next is yung future perfect tense. Gaya ng past perfect tense, may dalawang action dito na involve. Pero ito hindi pa nangyayari. Ang verb form nito ay will plus have plus past participle ng ating verb. For example, by the time I see you, by the by the time, ibig sabihin, hindi pa nangyayari. I see you, I will have graduated. So, may naikita na naman tayo yung dalawang verb, yung see at yung graduate. Ano yung unang mangyayari? Ito yung will have graduated. Kaya ito yung nasa will have form. Susunod yung I will see you. Yan, I see you. Next example, when they finally arrive, they will have traveled more than 10 hours. Meron na naman tayong dalawang verb, yung arrive, saka travel. Question na naman, ano yung unang mangyayari? Yung travel. Magta-travel muna sila ng more than 10 hours daw bago sila dumating. Kaya ito yung unang mangyayari at ito yung may will have form. Next is yung past progressive tense. Ito yung action or condition that is that was in progress over time or a specified point in the past. Ibig sabihin, tapos na ito, pero nung panahon na yon in progress ito. Ang verb form niya ay was plus verb ing for singular subjects. Were naman plus yung verb plus yung ing for plural subjects. For example, Last year at this time, ibig sabihin tapos na, they were preparing to volunteer at the conference. Ibig sabihin, in progress ito pero noong last year pa. Okay? Ang present progressive tense naman ay tumutukoy dun sa mga action na in progress pa. Hindi pa natin alam kung kailan matatapos. Pero nangyayari na ngayon. Ang verb form niya is is plus yung verb plus yung ing para sa mga singular subjects. R naman plus yung verb plus yung ing para sa mga plural na subject. For example, Wana is sleeping in the next door. Ibig sabihin, natutulog ngayon si Wana. Hindi natin alam kung kailan siya magkikisig. Next is, I need an umbrella because it is raining. 
So ngayon umuulan, pero hindi natin alam kung kailan siya matatapos. Habang ang future progressive tense naman ay action na mangyayari pa lang until may mag-trigger sa kanyang isang event. Okay? Next is yung future progressive tense. Ito ay yung action na hindi pa nangyayari pero it is expected to be in progress until something else happen. Ang verb form nito ay will be or will be going to plus yung verb plus yung ing. Example, I will be studying until the beginning of class. Ibig sabihin, mag-aaral ako hanggang magsimula yung aking klase. Titigil lang yung aking pag-aaral kung magsisimula na yung klase. Pero kung hindi magsisimula pa yung klase, yung pag-aaral ko ay patuloy na in progress. Tama. For example, For example, I will be studying until the beginning of class. Ibig sabihin, mag-aaral ako, hindi pa nangyayari. Mag-aaral ako hanggang sa magsimula yung ating klase. Ibig sabihin, magpo-progress lang o patuloy ako mag-aaral hanggat wala pa yung ating klase. Ang future progressive tense naman natin ay yung action na hindi pa nangyayari pero is expected to be in progress until something else will happen. Ang verb form niya ay will be or will going to plus yung verb plus yung ing. Okay. For example, I will be studying until the beginning of class. Ibig sabihin, mag-aaral lang ako ng mag-aaral until o hanggang sa magsimula ang aking klase. Hindi ito titigil kung hindi ito magsisimula. Okay? Next, at the same time tomorrow, I will be waiting for you in the lobby. I will be waiting for you dahil hindi pa ito nangyayari at hindi ito titigil hanggat hindi ka dumadating. Okay? So ito na yung pinakahuli sa ating topic na tenses of verb. Kailangan lang natin ulit na bisitahin kung ano nga ba ulit yung simple tense, perfect tense, at progressive tense every now and then. At gamitin ito ng tama sa ating mga sentences para sa susunod, innate na o natural na sa atin yung tamang paggamit ng ating tenses. Ang susunod nating pag-uusapan is yung adjectives. Adjectives are words that describe the qualities or state of being of a noun. So, yung adjectives natin, hindi lang siya basta-basta na lang natin sinasabi. May certain arrangement ang ating adjectives. Ang una is yung number kung ilan. 1, 2, 3. Opinion. Kung maganda o hindi. O, o yung may iba pang klase ng opinion. Next is yung size. Malaki, maliit, um, ano ba yung 3 inches, mga ganon. Age is yung 2 years old, 1 year old, young, old. Shape is kung rectangular ba siya, circular, at iba pa. Next is yung color. Blue, red, white, orange. Next naman is yung origin. Filipino, Indian, American, at iba pa. Next is yung material at susundan ito ng purpose. Para mas madali ninyong tandaan, tandaan ninyo ang salitang nos as com. Ang mauuna lagi na S is yung size. Susundan ito ng shape. Again, nos as comp. Okay? So, let's practice. RJ and Ariel wear blank shirt. Ano ba ang tamang sequence ng ating adjectives? So, the correct answer is B. Mauuna yung age. Blue at material. So, punta naman tayo sa prepositions of time. Ano nga ba ang pinagkaiba ng in, on, at at? So, simulan natin sa in. In refers to a range or period of time. Hindi siya definite. For example, my birthday is in September. Ang September o any date ng September ay ang kanyang birthday pero hindi siya definite. Kaya ang gagamitin nating preposition dapat dito ay in. Next example. We will be having our reunion in 
So, ang reunion natin ay sa 2030. Very general, very broad. Any day ng 2030 ang kanilang reunion. Kaya ang tamang preposition ay in. Pero kung ang time, pero kung ang time refers to a specific date o day, on dapat ang gagamitin natin. For example, I will visit you on Christmas Day. Or my essay is due on June 25. So, ang mga dates na ito, isang araw lang siya. Identified mo kung anong araw itong mga ito. Okay? O kaya, I will visit you on Tuesday. Okay? Pwede yun. Yung at naman refers to a part of the day, specific time. Kunwari, I will be here at 9.30. Very specific na siya at part siya ng isang araw. Next, I will meet you at sunrise. Okay, I will meet you at noon time. So, ayan po ang tamang paggamit ng prepositions of time. Next naman natin pag-uusapan is yung tamang paggamit ng me, myself, and I. Kailan ginagamit ang I? Kung ito ay yung doer ng action. For example, I took Angel to the cinema yesterday. Ako yung nagdala mismo kay Angel sa cinema kahapon. Ako yung gumawa ng kilos. Okay? Next. Ginagamit naman ng me kung ikaw ang receiver ng action. For example, John took me to the cinema yesterday. Si John yung doer ng action. Ako yung tagatanggap. Ako yung dinala niya sa cinema kahapon. Ano naman ang tamang sagot dito? John took Ariel, RJ, and Blanc to the cinema yesterday. Ano ang tamang sagot? Ang sabi ng iba, I. Pero tandaan natin na ang I ay yung doer ng action. Ito, receiver ka lang ulit ng action. So, anong tamang sagot? Me. Ginagamit naman ng myself kung ikaw ang parehas na subject at yung receiver ng action. For example, I took myself to the cinema yesterday. Yan. Isang malaking palatandaan din dito is yung paggamit ng I. Yan. Kung may nauna ng I, ang pwede mo nalang gamitin sa susunod is yung myself. So, dyan na po nagtatapos ang ating module 2. Sa inyong lahat na kukuha ng civil service exam, sana nakatulong ito at good luck po sa inyong lahat.